Hi, I'm Paul Bowman, CEO of Wexa, the digital fitness specialist who deliver over 25 million fitness experiences worldwide for our partners. Welcome to the Wexa podcast, where I'll be speaking to industry experts to help you with your digital journey. In today's episode, I'll be speaking with Jason Moore, CEO of Spring. They have helped over 1 million people leverage technology, data, behavioral science, and uh, to improve their health and well-being and performance. That was a tongue twister. Jason, how are you? <laughs> hey, Paul, it's awesome to be here. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad, uh, you know, we, you've you been on a world tour, I think. So I, yeah, well, um, this I was, will be fun to dig in. And I, I was, I was going to say to listeners, this is, of course, not normally the, the, the normal background. I'm currently sitting in an Airbnb, but uh, the podcast gods, gods weren't really nice to me and Jason, so we couldn't do it whilst I was in New Zealand. So we're on the road in London. <laughs> Awesome. No, it's exciting to be here and I'm happy to help with whatever we can help people with. Jason, I love that. Look, I, 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 I love your journey. I love your tech, but I think, you know, it's always important that the listeners understand probably a little bit of who you are and, and, and how did Spring come about? Yeah, thanks. Um, I mean, basically, it's a crossroads between my passion for health, fitness and wellness with my background in technology. Um, so I've been in tech for, since I was six years old, basically, but, um, basic, uh, you know, that was what I studied in school and got into was building software, building data analytics tools and, uh, making good user experiences. And then, uh, I actually on the side became a health and fitness coach and I was a coach for know. a number of years. Yeah. And then I, uh, and then over here in the U S I became an instructor for the, um, NSCA and NASM, which are right. national strength and conditioning association and national Academy of sports medicine, teaching more about how to use technology and biomarker tracking and things to mm. improve outcomes for, um, you know, health and fitness and coaching and stuff. So, um, so did, yeah. So did fitness, I always ask this in the pod, but, but does it, does, did fitness find you or did you find fitness? It, sound, it sounds like fitness found you. Yeah, well, it's an interesting because, you know, I was a competitive athlete growing up okay. and then I slowed down, you know, in my early 20s and stuff got really hard for whatever reason. And, sure. Yeah. Um, and cool then, getting old, Jason. Yeah, I know. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And uh, also, you know, I started seeing that my family around me, my friends around me, they were starting to gain weight and like have chronic health issues and pain and all sorts of stuff come up. And so it was just sort of like constantly on my radar. I even have really mm. early memories of my parents trying different diets and stuff when I was a kid so that right. they could try to stay ahead of it. So it was kind of always been there in the background. And then when it started mm. hitting me and I started seeing it with my family and friends, I was like, what is going on here? And the type of personality that I have is I just really go deep on stuff when I get into it. So nice. yeah. I just like started researching well, well, it and then, I, yeah. I think the industry can already say thank you for doing that, for going, for going deep like you did. Like, like is, is, that, is that what's motivating, is that what's the motivating mission now in terms of your work on a daily basis? Pretty much, you know, I think yeah. uh, it's kind of, like you said, it's, it's found me a little bit as well because mm -hmm. as I went deep, I was looking for things to measure about the body that could give us an idea of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And we started over 10 years ago, putting out a, yes. an app that yes. was uh, just this free little app called elite HRV. And um, suddenly it was being picked up by professionals and mm -hmm. sports teams. And I was getting all these emails about how I can make it better. And I was just like, Oh, like I have a day job. I, you know, I'm doing this nights and weekends yes. and, um, that just snowballed and really the world kind of pulled more out of us, um, sure. in those early days, which we feel grateful for, but, um, like there's yeah. not, there's not many people's products. I would say are quite magical, but the first time I ran my HRV based off a phone, I went, that's, that's cool. That's very, very cool. So, uh, you know, congratulations to you and your team on, on, on creating that magic. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I guess on that, in your own words, what, what, what does set Spring apart um, to, compared to competition? Yeah. You know, um, basically the way that it's evolved is uh, we developed this mission for making high quality insights about the body more accessible yeah. to more people. Yep. And um, that has been really a driving core um, part of our mission. And mm. we're, we're breaking down barriers of cost. So yes. 
Um, we love devices. I don't know. Anyone that watches the video could see there's a pile of devices mm. behind me mm. um, and lab work and all sorts of other stuff. Where, you know, all of that is great. Um, yes. and, but for us, we also saw an opportunity for some of these metrics to be built right into your phone. Yeah. Okay. And so um, as things become more consumer friendly, like wearables and devices and using your phone as a, as a sensor, the important thing is to keep the quality high. Right. Yes. And yes. so that's a big challenge. And there's a trade off usually between convenience and quality. And yes. uh, we've tried really hard to keep that bar really high on quality while mm -hmm. breaking down those barriers of cost and convenience. Nice. So that's one differentiator. And um, and then the other side of it, too, is that uh, accessibility is more than just a cost equation. Yes. It's also like how yes. easy is it to use and mm. how easy is it to understand and integrate into your life, right? Yes, yes. And so we've tried to keep that principle really uh, top of mind as well. So we kind of pride ourselves that you're getting the top quality at the lowest price with the best convenience and user experience. And I mean, that just sounds kind of ridiculous to say it's like yes. all of those yeah. things, but, yeah. but we try really hard to make it all of those things. <laughs> I know, I know the listeners are probably already going, ask him about the challenges of creating something like that. Cause you know, a lot, a lot of our listeners are tech people or in the industry mm -hmm. looking for tech solutions. So, and I, and I think, you know, I don't know if you feel like this, Jason, but I think there's a more of an appreciation of you know building building tech and then running tech as a as as a costly endeavor and then especially you know funding that at the same time in terms of cash flow like like what's what, what's been your major challenge uh, building stream from the from the from an idea? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like you're saying, it's a very expensive thing, especially as we got into camera tech and yes. developing that type of stuff. Uh, we've been fortunate to have really great investors jump on right. with us and we've raised a few rounds of venture capital and we have a lot of angel investors that are um, fairly notable um, joining us on the journey. So couldn't do it without them for sure. Of course. Of course. Um, but also I think we have a unique perspective that we kind of were a grassroots kind of community driven brand. and. Nice, yeah. Um, Challenger well, brand. Yeah. When we mm. started out, we had like, it was me and a friend. We put $500 in a bank account and then we started hacking away. And uh, I love those stories. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was basically just like I was yeah. saying that people started emailing us asking for more. And then I found mm. myself, you know, flying all over the world, talking to professional sports teams, mm. coaches, gyms, people just troubleshooting their, their issues and asking sure. them what can we measure and what can we do for analysis that would make your life easier? Yes. And that led us down the path from HRV to um, also then there's heart rate and respiration rate into body composition. Mm. And now, you know, other than a lot of sport performance being tied to, you know, proper muscular development and mm. um, re regulation of body fat, but also for like, almost everyone in the world has some sort of body composition related um, goal, you know, whether that's lose a little bit of fat, have a little bit of more energy or mm. um, build up a little bit of that lean mass, which we all know now is super important for longevity. Yep. Um, and so we kind of have bridged and broadened into all of these areas of saying, now you can just use your phone to accurately measure uh, your body composition. Mm. And uh, that's really hard to develop. So we've kind of uh, got a lot of volunteers from the community uh, because of this whole grassroots kind of community effort that have come on and said, you know what, I'll sign up, I'll go do uh, gold standard uh, scans in a lab where they mm. sign up and go into a lab and um, get these full body scans using yes. x-ray or other technology. Yeah and side by side um, also take images of their body with the phone and allow us to use those for research and development. And, mm -hmm. and so it's, uh, you know, there's a couple of factors here. One is we've been mm -hmm. able, uh, we originally bootstrapped our company to profitability before we had any funding. So well done. Well thank, done. thank you. Yep. Yeah. And uh, there's not, there's not, Wix has always been proud of itself on uh, being cash flow positive the whole time. So well, well done. There's not, there's not many of us out there like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I will say that once we took on venture capital, we did intentionally dip sure. back um, yeah. a yeah. little bit there, but 
uh, that I didn't even know that was a differentiator in the beginning when we did it because <laughs> I was like, well, we just put, like I said, it was like, we each put 500 bucks. So it was like a thousand dollars in a bank account and okay. we just started hacking away and then built and built and yes. eventually it was profitable and we could actually pay ourselves. Yes. Um, and, uh, so then when we went to raise capital, investors yeah. were like, oh, like you're profitable right now? That's, <laughs> that's kind of weird. Um, yes. um, but it also was a differentiator and it, and it, yes. it allowed us to really understand like, OK, how what do the people in the community actually need and they're willing to yeah. pay for? Yep. Nice. Um, and so we had kind of a really deep understanding of that. And yeah. that then fed into our research and development. And nice. um, it was very synergistic. So. Mm. Um, you know, it's, we, we have historically underperformed on like marketing and things like that because sure, we, sure. we just haven't invested in it mm -hmm. and there will be more investment in that soon, but, but, the, um, but, but, but power of a community is, 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 is strong with, with what I've seen at, the, at least and, and like, you, you like, and it may be on, on wrong in saying this, but, you know, I've, I've looked at your, you know, the, the, is it Dex, Dextra? level precision without the hardware like oh, is, yes. that, is, that, mm -hmm. is that the usp right now for spin and maybe explain that to, to listeners a bit yeah so a dexa scan is yes. yeah. um yeah it's basically the gold standard uh that's accessible to consumers for mm -hmm. measuring body composition and yeah. um, most people get exposed to it when they get a little bit uh, into that like middle age or above age bracket and their doctor yes. says, hey, we need to look at your bone mineral density. Mm -hmm. And they prescribe a, a scan where you go lay in this big machine and have a full body x-ray. And then mm -hmm. we, you know, are trying to prevent osteoporosis or things like that from developing. Um, but coincidentally, people found that that's, that scan for bone density also is really good at detecting body fat and muscle distribution around the body. And also not you know, coincidentally, that's very, that's far more valuable information than your body weight when it comes to metabolic health and fitness and, and just general health and well-being. And so uh, this, this spun out a whole industry of people mm. uh, going and paying out of pocket for these full body x-rays yes. to, you know, understand their body composition. And um, it, it's, uh, pretty head and shoulders above a lot of the like smart scales and stuff. I want to mm -hmm. uh, be careful with that. You know how I say that because I think smart sure. scales and all these devices are really good. Yep. Um, but yep. when you really want to understand uh, accurately what the fat and muscle distribution around your body is, and mm. uh, it's not just a quantity thing. It also matters where it is and how it's yep. developing. And yes. So uh, that's what we've been using as our gold standard benchmark. And um, we're actually, there's a, a study that will be published soon, uh, which I can't say the exact details from because I can't uh, ruin the- Are you doing a teaser right now, Jack? Yeah, a little teaser, <laughs> a little teaser. I uh, can't, because uh, I don't want to ruin their publication process, but okay. an independent uh, review uh, comparing us against uh, gold standards okay. and finding us to be- extremely close on accuracy to the gold standard using just nice. your phone's camera. So, and, 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 and let's go a little bit deeper in, into personalization because of course you're taking such, such amazing metrics, you know, from, from our end, we, we've seen, we, we look at things from a, of course, a content point of view, but more from a confidence point of view. So how do mm. I improve someone's confidence through digital, through finding the best, talent and putting that in a device that can help them either, you know, support them or inspire them. But how it's, it's been, do you see personalization in terms of trying to change behaviors or, you know, trying to support or inspire um, society? Yeah. You know, personalization, I think is a word that has, you know, it's been mm. like a kind of almost like a buzzword that has yeah. developed around that. Right. Yeah. And um, it's something that, we're, I think, just at the tip of the iceberg on really? the level of personalization. And it's almost hard to imagine uh, how personalized things are going to become over the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. And 10 years is not that long, right? Yes. Like no. it's uh, no. over the next 10 years, as the, as the uh, data gets integrated from mm -hmm. wearables and uh, health records and other systems that you use combined with phones, uh, camera sensing, like things that we yes. have, 
um, the level of personalization is just going to go through the roof and mm. um, it, it gets to the point where, you know, the exact workout that you need um, yeah. is going to be surfaced for you in the moment that you need it. Right. Um, or the exact uh, meal uh, recipe suggestions mm. or, um, you know, all of these elements that we deal with, which is like mm -hmm. food and exercise and uh, movement and stress and sleep and all this stuff. We're going to get a level of personalization and care and guidance on all of that, that uh, you today, billionaires and professional athletes get some of that um, of because they are able to pay for teams of people, you mm -hmm. know, to mm -hmm. manage all of these different areas of their uh, yeah. life or their approach. And that's going to become accessible to, I would say, the vast majority of people in the next 10 years. And and do you believe the form factor will always be the phone? Well, definitely in the next kind of five years, you, the, the phone is going to be always the form factor for yourselves? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Mm. You see these like um, new AI devices, mm. quote unquote, yeah. you know, yeah. air, air quotes around yes. that, that yeah. um, are kind of different things you can like clip to your shirt or sure. you can wear in different ways. Um, it's hard to predict what's going to be in 10 years, but I think mm -hmm. you're right. In the next five years, the phone is going to be a really difficult thing to, you know, dethrone, so to speak, yes. because yeah. Yeah. It's just so powerful. It's a supercomputer in your pocket. And the user experience for these devices has been refined so well that yes. it's just like the patterns of our behavior are already so tied to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do think that wearables play an important role as well. Mm -hmm. And there's going to mm -hmm. increasingly be a lot of handoff between wearables and the phone on yeah. how they kind of share the share the load. Yeah. And, and is that but but is that gonna be I guess maybe a better, bigger question is where, where do you see it evolving in the next five years in terms of how it affects your business? Yeah. So, um, I mean, so one of the things for us is we've always been device agnostic and yeah, yeah. essentially what, you know, that means is we're happy to play with all of the devices that are available. Yes. Yeah. Um, and there's companies that have built really amazing uh, devices mm -hmm. um, and we can partner with them or leverage those devices to just do more and yes. um so phones is an easy example of that but mm -hmm. our technology will be available via webcam or via yeah. uh, even what's called the internet of things that's kind of yes, a, of course. Uh, yes, almost yeah, like yeah. a throwback word at this point yeah, but yeah. Um, it does feel 10 years ago now jason yeah it does <laughs> uh but you know people kind of got a taste yeah. of this um especially during covid with uh yeah. There was a lot of explosion of interest around like connected fitness equipment and yes. um, smart yeah. mirrors and smart TVs and all sorts of stuff. Um, mm. All of those things now have cameras built into them that are yeah. already c compatible with Sprint technology today. Yeah. Um, so you'll be and does, able to. And does that have, you know, we, we uh, have a white label agnostic uh, platform as well in terms of white labeling. And of course, that adds to some technical compl uh, complications but but like you say is that is that we is that we see like do you see everyone using individual devices to run those or, or do you see it like you know being on a treadmill and if you can run it you run at that time and that being a feeder to the phone or you, are you trying to build an infrastructure that you can just go anywhere so wherever they want to you can do it is is that is that the goal exactly yeah like yeah. our goal yeah. is to get out of your way so yeah. um, basically, it's like there are certain things that it's really good for you to set time aside to do. Like, obviously, mm -hmm. exercise is one of those things. Cool. And I don't know of any inventions yet that allow you to exercise while you're asleep or something. No. But no, no. Um, as much as G GLP ones will claim it, but, you know, it's not. Actually yeah. Realistic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And those have, you know, I don't know if it's interesting to the listeners, but, yeah. you know, there's amazing technologies and drug innovation and stuff like yes. that, but yes. um, we have still not yet seen, including with the current uh, mm -hmm. drugs, um, th things that provide, uh, you know, enough benefit with limited downside, right? Yes, and agreed. So yes. Body composition as a quick mm -hmm. tangent has been, yeah. has exploded around GLP ones because mm -hmm. when you are on GLP ones you tend to lose a lot of lean mass and yeah, yeah. and that muscle is just essential for metabolic health and for yes, aging yes. and longevity and everything and so um, 
these drugs definitely have a place of where they're beneficial, but totally. they have to be, we have to think really critically about it. And ironically, the two things that you need to do to offset those is get yeah. enough protein and, and exercise. exercise yeah. And so Ironic. <laughs> if you're going to do those things anyways, you know, yes, like yeah, yeah. you can often well, get the weight loss I I, with that as well. I don't want to name names, but I'm, I'm actually really surprised. Like even some people in the fitness industry that are, that are taking these probably definitely more probably in the U S and, and in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I actually think there's a big component. Don't get me wrong. I think, that, I think it's a great, anything that makes society <laughs> better you, why not and, and and but i really think the catalyst is yes they are they're taking the drug but they're working out more they're eating more a better they're you know drinking less they're, they're, like the the pill and i think uh, if i'm honest i feel like a lot the cost of the pill um is actually driving them to really get bang for their buck and it'll be interesting mm. to see when these become more mainstream if we see the same levels of healthy adoption, um, mm -hmm. but that's that's one to check out there. I don't have an answer. It's just it's just my observations. I don't know, what are you, what are you seeing? Yeah, you know, I mean, whether you're using medicated medication assistance or you're just mm -hmm. kind of on an aggressive like body composition journey, um, yes. where you're doing extreme weight loss, for example, all of these scenarios are. Um, uh, we've had people contact us and say, "Hey." I was also doing extreme dieting, right? And yeah. um, I was losing tons and tons of uh, weight off the scale. But mm. then I started monitoring with Spren and realizing that most of that was lean mass. Mm. And they, you know, Spren has only been, the body comp tech has only been out for one year. And, okay. Okay. Um, and so early on, people were like, ah, I don't know if I believe this. So they went to their doctor and they actually did the full lab analysis and confirmed right. that what they were seeing in our app was true. And they were like, oh, shit, I need to, um, you know, not be losing lean mass. Yes, and yes. they uh, followed our nutrition guidance around protein right. And yes. then, um, you know, making sure to get enough resistance training in. And yes. then they were able to keep the scale weight going down, but yes. then they were able to preserve the lean mass and keep it up. And so there's actually little tweaks that you can do that mm. really offset the downside of these things, you know? Right. Yes. And that's kind of, I think, it's lost in the mainstream message yeah, a little does. bit, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. It's yeah. just seen as like um, a miracle approach or a miracle mm. pill or something like that. And, it does in some ways produce miracles, but it's just, uh, there's, it's a little bit more nuanced than that. You got to pay attention to these, um, the you know, little factors, right? No, I like that. Okay. And, and then you've done very well in terms of working with so many different industries, like, like what, what, how how is has that been by accident or is that that you you've tried to do it that way you know you're working with, i'm just looking at some now like minute you're working in military you're working with gyms there, there's there's a lot um sports facilities so is is that purposeful or tell me i'll uh i'll t uh, i'll I'll, <laughs> I'll i'll tell you the joke version first which is yes okay. this is all very intentional we we have yeah. a master plan yeah, yeah. Uh, no it's <laughs> there's no vcs probably listening just right 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 <laughs> just close your ears vcs um but um no it's uh, ultimately i just would, didn't know how to say no in the beginning and okay. yeah. um yeah. we probably didn't focus well enough um but i i would say uh, that's not really intended to be like uh, shame, shame on us. I'm just saying no, that sure. yeah, um, yeah. this type of feedback from the body of understanding mm. what's going on is just so relevant to so many yeah. things that yes. yeah. um, we honestly get a lot of inbound interest for all of that. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, the military and police fire and all that stuff came to us and okay. um, we feel very grateful about that. Um, you know, I, it kind of deluded me, I will say in the early days because it was just we happened to be in the right place at the right time with a different right. and useful technology and all these sure. people were coming and asking for it and i was like oh this is just how business works like you just <laughs> make this thing and then everybody it's just so comes. easy you can just yeah, go so vertical, easy, by vertical. Right? <laughs> and uh when we went to raise venture capital uh yeah, that was yeah. a very educational process for me i will just yeah. share openly that the first yeah. rounds of pitches that i did which was like you know four years ago or more now um, were very embarrassing. And uh, I would say all these We've things all been like, there. yeah, we don't even need marketing. It's so great. Yeah. And they're, they're like, yeah, I mean, that is 
cool but yeah. you know there's a lot of aspects to business that you need to pay attention to and um, there's going to be a limit likely to like how far you can take it using this yeah. method. but and, and 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 then i guess of course most of our listeners are gym executives like 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 mm -hmm. what in your if, if you had a perfect world in terms of you know, trying to grow the pie, more people engaged in society and in, in, in the fitness industry, you know, leveraging uh, your technology. How, how would you see a customer journey in the ideal world for you? Yeah, so we kind of think about there's like two um, um, dimensions here. One is we're ultimately trying to serve, you know, what tech calls the end user, right? Mm -hmm. Which is the, the client, the member, the person who's trying to improve their health and well-being or their mm. body composition or their performance, right? That That's the ultimate customer for us. Sure. And we want to build the best user experiences and tools to help those people get the results. Now, that being said, we also think that partnerships is essential for us to do that. Sure. And so um, we can't be the expert at everything and mm -hmm. we can't be everywhere solving every problem. Right. And sure. Sure. Uh, data providing data and insights is just this tiny slice of the overall pie that it takes to actually get somebody the results they're mm. looking for. Yes. Right. Uh, I kind of like to make these jokes sometimes with people when I'm saying like, look, measuring stuff about the body is extremely valuable mm -hmm. unless you don't do anything with it. And then it's, worthless yes. yep. <laughs> right? totally you can yeah. measure all you want and yes. it will yeah. not do anything for you yes. unless you take that and translate it into action right yeah. yeah and so that's where um the right content the right guidance the right coaching the right equipment all of these things are essential for getting people um the results they're looking for on that journey and we feel very strongly about partnering with you know the right entities and people uh, to make that happen. Well said. And then I, I guess what 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 is what does the future hold for for yourselves as a business? And and I guess what two two part question: What does the future hold? And then and then what what concerns you as we go into that future? Yeah, I mean, you know, this is an area that, for better or for worse, there's like trillions of dollars of problems to solve, and mm -hmm. um, you know, we want to contribute a lot to that um, that increased level of personalization that we talked yep. about earlier um we feel like that's going to be a kind of missing piece you know mm -hmm. the knowledge the template let's say for being healthy and fit and performing well it's pretty much out there right yeah like Great. Yep. you know uh the basics of exercise movement nutrition mm -hmm. stress management yeah. sleep um, even now, things like connection and social relationships and yes. going yep. outside and getting sunlight, all of those things are kind of, it's out there. Mm -hmm. um, it really breaks down in when you try to fit those things into your life and yes. uh, nav you know, like go that day-to-day -day journey. Yes. And yeah. so we really want to work hard to um, power that up and make it more personal, make it easier, uh, make the feedback loops tighter. Because, mm -hmm. you know, if you do something and then like a month later, I tell you that wasn't the right thing to do, sure. then that's a little bit late for you to make adjustments, right? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you're going to be like 20 years into your journey before you finally figure it out. Um, mm -hmm. But if you do something and then I can tell you within the hour or even yeah. within a minute yes. that, that that was a uh, good or, you know, better or worse uh, decision. Yep. Right. Yep. Then the, those feedback loops start getting tight enough where you mm -hmm. can make really rapid adjustments that are much smaller. Yes. And um, that kind of compounds to the results you're looking for. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, so that's maybe a little philosophical, but I think. No, 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 no. I, I tried to go deep, Jason, on that question. So then I, <laughs> I, I, I like that. I, I, I guess the last thing is it, it, I always ask this to tech individuals is that how did the super users on your platform become super users? Like mm. what, what was their feedback as they went through that journey? Yeah. So a lot of times people come to us because, you know, they've been trying a bunch of stuff mm. and, and mm. some of it worked, some of it didn't you know, and some of it worked at first and then stopped working. And they're really just like trying to sort through what the hell am I supposed to be doing? Because mm -hmm. yes, all these things seem simple at face value, but I tried those things and it didn't work for me. And, okay. um, and so they either 
sometimes they can't afford to work with a coach, but and other times they're trying to find the right coach, right? Sure, sure, and, sure. Um, and they're also nowadays there's always a hybrid concept too, yes. where it's yeah. like, okay, um, I can go to a gym, I can work with somebody in person. That's really good if somebody can do yeah. that, they should. Um, yeah. But there's also like if you go to the gym, let's say four hours a week or something, mm -hmm. then there's 164 other hours in the week. Yeah, I agree. Yes. Right. Yeah. And so what are you doing in those? What are you yeah. doing in those? Mm -hmm. And yeah. how are you tracking all those other behaviors? And mm -hmm. a, a big issue that a lot of coaches run into um, is that they'll work really hard with you during those hours that you're in the gym. And sure. then, and then you undo it all <laughs> when you, yeah. when you're yeah. at home. And so yeah. Yeah. we're just trying to create bridges um, for nice. people and to help them understand. So that's where the power users get, they, they yep. come in, they're like, I have this problem. They start measuring and getting the feedback mm. loop. And they're mm. like, oh, now I can see like every yeah. time I do this, it starts to send my results going in the wrong direction. And now it's just a small tweak. I can um, start making the go in the right direction. And yeah. Yeah. oftentimes people will to build a little bit more habits around tracking more things. Mm -hmm. You know, I will say real quick that even though we are a measurement and tracking toolkit um i kind of tell people don't track stuff if you don't need to and no, agree, our yeah, goal is to yeah, not get you yeah. to track everything all the time yeah it's yeah, basically it was, like, you, you kind of just become numb to everything that is actually giving you right like rather than actually it, being actionable exactly yeah. it just becomes yeah, yeah. noise and it also becomes a stress right it's kind of yeah, like yeah. Um, oh, I need to keep up with this. I'm not really even sure why I'm tracking this. If sure. you're not sure why you're tracking it, then it's probably not. Don't, you know, I think I think for me, because you know, I'm a big, I'm a, I'm, a, I guess I'm addicted to HRV, knowing what it is every morning and all that type of stuff. But it wasn't because I came from a performance side that didn't serve. I didn't need it for that. It was actually how my day to day life, and not even because sleep was great as well with the with getting that. But it was actually how my day to day life impacted my overall load mm. um and, and and what i was realizing i was doing is you know actually high stressful days i'd also probably mix it with a really high stressful workout putting a lot of load on my body and then kind of wondering why i was falling slick sick when i do that you know day in day out and going actually just making those real simple adjustments to get that right and listening to it man it makes a big difference so my that would be my advice to all listeners and uh pro, you know use 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 one of jason's products to be able to do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i appreciate you paul yeah yeah i mean that's our goal like one of the things i found super early is that um our community is also mm -hmm. sort of cumulatively more experts than we are on this stuff and yes, so yeah, yeah. what I mean by that is we put out these tools, people start using them and they discover yeah. all these new use cases for them that we yeah. never even imagined. Right. Totally. Totally. And they're like, Hey, they'll come back to us. And, and let's say 10 years ago, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't have been able to rattle off my tongue sort of thresholds and timing of alcohol and, sure. and yeah. like, yes. you know, you how two, that like impacts. Two volumes and I'm done. Yeah. I'm yeah. Read. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so now we've seen enough data, like I think hundreds of thousands of people have tracked their alcohol consumption with us. And um, but going into it, like people just did that on their own. Those power mm -hmm. users that you're talking about, they'll test one thing, they'll measure, they'll see what yeah. it does. Then they'll report back and be like, hey, did you know, like if I have a beer an hour before the, you know, <laughs> or an hour earlier, like it yes. actually impacts my sleep way less. Yes and, yes, and then yeah. my morning HRV um, is much better. It's better. Yes, and yeah. so just that little change of just—it's mm. funny because it's like drinking earlier, right? But no, no. <laughs> but it's just yeah, those I little have to things. Start drinking at one, and so my productivity's out the window, but my HRV is really good. <laughs> right, right, right. Now, now I'm going to see people like on their lunch break. You know, they're yeah. like, I told my boss that <laughs> having this cocktail at lunch was healthier for was me. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> well, to be honest, I am in I am in London right now, so all I see as soon as it hits about one o'clock they all start drinking so that might that might that might be the reason <laughs> they're, just, they're just ahead of the game on being healthy right exactly and, the, and look i love i've loved the conversation i loved having you on but but, but how do people connect with you jason so spren s-p-r-e-n.com um we are activating a lot more partnerships right now so right. Yeah. um you know uh if you're interested in that please hit us up um yep. and uh also the app uh, S P R E N. You can search that in the App Store. 
um, and we will be back on Android soon. Um, the the product was evolving really rapidly over the past mm -hmm. year, so we actually paused Android development for a few months. I was uh, actually going to ask you this offline. Um, I'm a big Google Pixel guy, so I was going to say that. I'm glad you addressed this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's yeah. we you know, uh, we feel strongly that we want to be up to par yeah. on, on both and and basically mm. anywhere that you could use it. So uh, that will be back online soon, um, and uh, with all of the uh, uh, bells and whistles that iOS will have or has. Nice. Um, so um, yeah, you can find us there, and then you can find me like. Um, I'm not super active on social media myself, but maybe LinkedIn mm -hmm. is a good spot. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, happy to connect. Look, and, and so thank you for joining the Wixom podcast. I really, really enjoyed our, our conversation. And thank you for everything you're doing for, well, giving people the ability to, I guess, empower their own measurements and make those changes that, that will help them live a healthier life. So um, thank you very much, Jason. Well, thanks you, Paul. I mean, I think we have a shared mission. You're you're getting more people moving and making more people accessible to high quality movement and digital content. So a lot of sy synergy there. There is partnership to be announced shortly. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Bye, Jason. Thank you.